This podcast was brought to you by Tide Pods. Chuck one in your washing machine and watch it spin round. Tide Pods, get one today. Ha! Just kidding. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to chime in here and give you a bit of a preface to the echoing that you're going to hear. I got to Ryan McDonald's place and we chatted for a bit and just before we were about to start recording, he pulls out a brand new microphone and he was like, you know, sometimes I notice your audio is a little quieter than your guests and I wanted to fix that for you. I wanted to help you out and it's honestly the nicest thing a person could do, especially after he'd already given me a ton of his time in a busy day and I really appreciate it and I did everything I did could do to uh, reduce the echo. So if anybody knows of any tips and tricks, uh, it gets uh, put into one track with the software that I use. So I can't, I can't uh, reduce his voice on one track and have it in the other. In any case, I will find the solution for next episode because I am a guy who likes to come up with solutions. I want to take this moment where I'm jibber-jabbering to thank you for listening to The Lifestyle Chase. This is a passion project of mine. I should probably be spending more time doing personal training, but I enjoy speaking with people and learning lessons every time, and I think it's valuable to share that with others. There's a lot of uh, hard-hitting things that we come across in life, and sometimes there's happy moments, and if I can share those, that's the least I can do. So if you enjoy this, share it on social media, maybe give it a rating, maybe comment. If you don't want to, that's okay. I'll get a little bit sad, but not super sad. Thank you for listening. Let's do this thing. Welcome to the Lifestyle Chase. This podcast features high performers who have found a way to live their best life while balancing their health, wellness, friends, and family. Proudly hosted by me, Chris Little. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we are, ready to go for episode 27 of the Lifestyle Chase. I'm here, joined by my uh, new sponsor, Ryan McDonald. He's brought you better audio today by uh, sponsoring a new mic and that's amazing and it kind of speaks to uh, why he's on the podcast he's a great guy always supports my uh my projects and endeavors so how are you doing today i'm good how are you i'm good good trying to think i had something funny that happened this morning but i forgot all about it Uh, (laughs) traffic is bad i know it's crazy i had to drive up to an acreage this morning that was crazy oh and everything's behind right because people get Somebody else gets lost, so I'm on time, but then the photographer's late, and then he's late for the rest of his appointments that day, and I wasn't sure I'd be back here for you in time. But you made it. Here we are. So, take us through, like, the busiest day that you've had in the last month. Oh, God. <laughs> like, what's your... Why routine? don't I... How about I... Why don't I read you today's schedule? Deal. Um, okay. My day starts at 5.30 in the morning. I work out. At 5.30. So I'm up usually around 5. You know, you do the pre-workout shake. And then I train on an empty stomach. That's a, probably a whole other conversation. Um, then uh, I have breakfast with my family. I'm very scheduled in my life. And I have to schedule everything, including family time. Uh, so that kind of sucks. But this is, this is my real schedule. I'm reading it off my phone. So I have breakfast with my family. I take my son to... Uh, day home at about 8 a.m. At 9 o'clock, I had photos at Y Haven. Um, at 9.30, I had to pick up some keys for a client at Richie Way. Then at 10 o'clock, I had an estimate. And then today at noon, we have this for a little bit. At 2 o'clock, sorry, 2.30, I have uh, a team meeting with my team where I actually have to watch this webinar. At 4 o'clock, I have an inspection. At 4.30, I have to write an offer. Um, at 6 o'clock, I have uh, dinner with my family, and at uh, 8 p.m., I have prep for tomorrow. Damn. That's today. That's a good routine. Um, it's not that, I mean, there's certain things in this that are routine, but the day is generally packed the way it is. You know, like the wake up time, the breakfast time is about the only constant in there. Everything else is kind of, it just gets filled up, you know? 
Makes sense. Makes sense. And in between all that time, I have to find some time to eat. <laughs> Eating is important. What's your favorite meal? What's your go-to like lunch meal? Oh, I don't have a go-to. Um, I, as as part of a, I guess a New Year's resolution. Um, I, although I started before New Year's, I just wanted I just wanted to to eat healthier in general and just make better choices. Um, so that's what I've been doing. I haven't. I mean, like, none of my meals are something that I absolutely love. But, like, before you got here, I had yogurt and strawberries. That's, uh, or not strawberries, but just berries. Yep. And that's, uh, I don't know, I look forward to that. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. I'm getting sick of, like, the same sort of thing every day. Um, but until I reach a certain goal, then I will uh, start to change things up a little bit, um, be a little bit more flexible. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like... I love pizza. Like, that's, like, my favorite thing. I could eat pizza every day. What's your favorite pizza in the city? Sure, Park or Edmonton? Uh, honestly, I, I'm biased. I, my first job was Little Caesars Pizza, and I love it. I love it. So, you know, I'll just get there. I'll just get a, like, hot and ready pepperoni, and I'll get uh, garlic butter and Parmesan cheese put all over it, and I'll, I'll eat the whole pizza. Nice. So, yeah. I'll dip it in. So you just have some sort of dip. What about uh, yogurt? Have you ever tried that Icelandic uh, Skyr yogurt? No, I use the, uh, the Greek gods 10% oh. honey yogurt is what I eat. Very nice. What brand is it? The brand is the Greek, the Greek gods. gods. Yeah, you get a Costco. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I have some. Yeah, have some. <laughs> a little break, I'll give you some. That's awesome. Yeah, I like the Greek yogurt just because it's protein content and it just kind of starts your day off like. Yeah, and it's quickly. good. You know, it yeah. tastes good. Berries are good. Berries good. Yogurt good. Have you ever tried uh, granola clusters in there? Yes, I have. Nice. Yeah. I used to get that at Costco. Actually, you can buy their little parfait or whatever it is. Yeah, I'll usually get all like the pieces right, separate. Costco, I meant Starbucks, not Costco. <sighs> Big difference. Come right? on. Yeah. Uh, I have to. Uh, Make a, a shout out to this because Vance always teases you for uh, hot dogs at Costco. Is it true? It's not hot dogs. I'm like, <laughs> I've ran into Costco. Like, I, I've maybe eaten at Costco. Like, people rave about the, the hot dogs. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm not a big hot dog fan. <laughs> I've eaten at Costco in my life and I go to Costco every week. I've probably eaten there three times in my whole life, including like as a kid growing up with my family, three times. Vance has seen me twice. <laughs> and like, I don't think either time I was eating that, I was probably eating the pizza. Yeah. I don't think I've even ever had their hot dogs. I just think it's so funny because like... We do tease each other about food though. And... Ice cream was a big one. Even, even when I'm in there just doing my own thing, he sees it's the Sherwood Park one and he like loops you in there. Oh, did you see him uh, eating the hot dogs? Yeah, I know, I know. Nope, I don't know what not it this is. time. I don't know what it is, yeah. It's hilarious. That's awesome. Yeah. So you recently, or maybe not too recently, but uh, entered into the dad life. Yeah. And what what's that journey been like? It has uh, profoundly changed my life. Um, it's changed me as a person. It's it's you know like you have friends who have kids and they go, you won't know the real love. You have kids. And I married like for years. I'm like in the back of my mind, rolling my eyes at that person. But it's true, man. Like once you have kids, things change. Like, like so much changes. It's not just that you have more responsibility, which is, you know, obvious. But like, I think about everything in a different way now. Like, I think about the way I back out of my driveway. I think about like the kids playing at the park. I think about bullying. I think about texting and driving. I think about swimming. I think about like, like, like for example, I have a furnace, a heater in the garage, right? And we just moved in this house. I don't know. It's an old furnace. I don't know how good it is, but his room's above, above there. I think about things like happening with this old furnace. So like all these other things, maybe I would have put off before or, or you know, not thought twice about. I think about so much now. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, it's changed the way I speak. It's, it's changed everything. It's, it's the best thing to happen to me in probably ever. What was the journey like approaching the day when you became a dad? Like for, for Vance, who is probably listening to this episode, um, what kind of advice would you give him? Not that you haven't already, but what advice would you give him in those days going up to that, that moment? Like, the, like before 
take, taking away the nerves, um, things to prepare for, stuff like that. Be prepared. <laughs> you know, like, one of my friends who's a known procrastinator uh, didn't even have, um, like, a, a car seat. And the baby came early. That's the thing. So it's like, we got lots of time. You know, well, what if the baby comes a month or two early and yeah. you're not ready? Yeah. You know, they didn't have a crib. They didn't have anything. They weren't, they weren't ready. They couldn't bring their baby home from the hospital. Uh, so I would say be prepared. Yeah. Like, think about stuff like that. Think about things like even in the hospital, like like we wanted a private room, right? You have to be prepared for that. You have to pay for that. Um, you, you know, take the courses. I would say... Listen to the advice that people give you from people who have kids who act the way you want your kids to act. Because everybody will give you opinions. And most of them won't have kids that act the way you want them, your kid to act, ideally, right? So, um, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Makes sleep sense. training, we hired a sleep consultant. That was a big deal, too. Um, that I don't think enough people or hardly anybody does, but it's... It's almost the best money I've ever spent. Um, and, uh, yeah, twins, though, man. Like, I remember I remember uh, when we got pregnant. My cousins are twins, Austin and Tyler, LG. They might even listen to this. And my uncle called me, and he goes, just remember when everything's going to hell, and the baby's crying, and you've done everything, and shit just hits the fan. He's like, times that by two. That's what I had to deal with. <laughs> oh. And I told Beth that. We'll see. That's, that's awesome. He, he seems like the hype is up here, like top shelf for him. Like he's, he's talking about it all the time, which is, it makes it more exciting for like the people who are invested in, in him and mm-hmm. his future and stuff. And then Jesse number two, like I know, man. talk about timing. I know. They're going to be baby buddies. I know. <laughs> it's good like that you know I had uh, some other very close friends um, that we all had babies together so we all have kids like within a year of each other yeah you know which is great um, and, and and we were the first ones right so it's it's nice to be able to support other people you know like we had things the tiny things that were outgrowing that we could donate to people and um, you know advice along the way mistakes along the way all that stuff what are the three biggest lessons you've learned in being a father? Lessons I've learned in being a father? Um, when people say they're a sponge, they mean that. Like, they pick up everything you do. I notice it even with, like, the way I treat my dog, you know. if I, Like, I'm pretty stern with her, you know. And he does that now. And I see it, and I go, you know, like, is that what I sound like? You know, yeah, kind of big. It, yeah. it really opens your eyes. Um, yeah, like, uh, I don't know, like lessons I've learned. I, I, I've, I've learned to trust my wife. Um, she has done the research and I don't question it as much, at least anymore. In the beginning, uh, it's important to be on the same page and uh, we weren't always on the same page. Same page. Speaking of my wife, she's walking in the door right now. Nice, nice. Um, but we weren't on the same page because, you know, we're different. It's just that she's read the books and, and you know, done the research, and I didn't. So I would question things, and then she'd, she'd tell me, uh, you know, no, you don't do it like that. You do it like this. And I think that's a big mistake that a lot of people uh, do is they don't think about things. They don't research things. They don't, you know, they just wing it, which is fine. You can survive, but, you know... We were really, you know, cognizant of the fact that we we didn't want to have to mold our lives around the kid. We wanted him to be part of our life. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And that's those are good lessons that people don't often like think about. Like uh, we go into life thinking, you know, obstacles are tough. We kind of stop at the obstacle. We don't take failure as a lesson, or we don't take hard things as a lesson, or change as a lesson, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And the more lessons we can take from life, the, the more resilient we become and the further we get and the more fulfilled we, we feel. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. A lot of people 
know you as a realtor, but tell us about the things, the, maybe the, the odd jobs and stuff that led you to become a realtor. What's, what's your legacy story? Um, the odd, there were no real odd jobs that uh, led me to become one. I, uh, I started my first job, as I said, was at Little Caesars Pizza. Yeah, yeah. I was 15 years old. I always kind of wanted to work for myself. Um, in every job that I've had, I've you know sort of worked my way up the ladder. It was my own, not my own boss, but a boss, I suppose. Um, and then it was kind of a uh, you know it was a certain predicament that I was in at the time where I might not have had a job. I could have stayed in the hospitality industry, I suppose, if I wanted to, but I had the option to get out. Um, and I was at the age where I was kind of like, do I really want to be in this for much longer? You know, where am I going to be if I am in this? Um, so I was provided this opportunity. I shouldn't say provided, I chose it. Um, and it kind of just clicked one day where, I, I, you know, I always drive around, I drive around neighborhoods looking at houses and, you know, I can tell you, so much stuff about every neighborhood and every person who lived there. You know, it's mostly wealthy neighborhoods because that was my interest, right? And it kind of all of a sudden made sense. And I thought, why haven't I been? Why am I not a realtor? You know, like I, I, I could have done. I should have done this ten years. Ago. If I had done this ten years before I did, I'd probably be retired by now because there was this big boom in between that I missed. Yeah. And all those people I went to school with that bought houses with other people. Like, there's a lot of. A lot of money left on the table for Ryan, but hey, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah. Uh, looking back now, I, I didn't really realize what, how big of a risk it was hopping into this industry with no safety net. I had, like it was, I had no choice. And uh, actually, I, I remember kind of thinking about that at the time because Jesse was kind of starting his own journey at the same time. And I remember saying, like, like, what if it doesn't work? And he's like, it has to work. That's true. Yeah. You know, if you don't have a fallback plan, you can't fall back. Yeah. So, anyways, um, then I, I began. I went and got my course, and uh, I, I hit the ground running. It, you know, it wasn't easy, you know. Um, but we're still here, 10 years almost now, which is crazy to me. What are the, the three lessons that you've learned in your real estate career? Things that you would tell like your your younger team? Uh, the lessons I learned in my real estate career. Um, don't expect to get paid for six months when you start. Um, that's a tough one. You know, the financial responsibility in the beginning is is quite difficult. I have a team of people under me now. Um, and I make it easier financially, uh, among other things, for them because I remember that in the beginning. Um, and uh, if we didn't have like Alex at the time, who was able to financially and emotionally support me uh, until we started making some money, uh, like I, I, the wood worked, I couldn't have done it. Um, the failure rate in this industry is huge. It's like ninety percent of them don't make it past the second year or something like that yeah um so yeah that's uh that's one of the things that you know you have to be prepared for um what are the other things too i mean you know i'm a pretty cynical person <laughs> and i'm always kind of worried about how i'm getting screwed or someone's screwing me and that that is because of this business because you're constantly dealing with contracts and people looking for vulnerabilities and yeah. trying to take advantage of you um, and I would say find yourself a mentor who can guide you through that process because you aren't going to get walked on there are it's a cutthroat industry and there are plenty of people out there who will take advantage of you and your client and then you lose lose you know there's no coming back from that mm -hmm. do that too many times that's it you'll say screw this yeah. it's something else no kidding. That being said, uh, I, I think that real estate is an excellent stepping stone for anybody. Um, I'm certainly not going to be a realtor forever. God. <laughs> um, but um, for now, it, you know, it provides a lot of you know, different things for me. Not, 
only financially, but, you know, the freedom of being able to do things the way I want to do them. And, um, you know, it also provides me with, um, you know, like I'll be involved in real estate in some way or another. And that, a lot of those things I'm learning along the way throughout this business. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, what are the three biggest obstacles you faced in life? One of them was becoming a realtor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just what I said there, you know, and if I didn't have Alex to support me through that, it would have been... That totally. Been um, you know, that's a tough question because I I didn't... Like, I haven't had a hard life, you know, being real here. Like, I, I, I have, uh, you know, parents that are still together. You know, we were never hard up for money. We, we grew up in, a, you know, a nice, safe you know, household, there was no alcohol problems or drugs or anything, you know, so I haven't had a lot of real hardships yet. It's all about perspective though, like one person's obstacle is no less serious than another person's, it's just something that held them back that they moved forward and, and how you move forward kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I'd have to think about that some more, you know, uh, a lot of my stuff just relates to work. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I got to think about that. Let's circle back to that. Sure, we will. So, next thing is going to be, who are two mentors in your life? And how have they enabled you in your career, personal life, family life, anything? Just in any aspect that has made your life better. Um... Uh, Jesse Gabina is a very large influence on my life. Um, has has been for a long, long time. We used to work in Montana's together back in the day, and uh, he's really been um, not only business wise, but you know personally uh, uh, um, held my hand through a lot of things throughout the years. Um, and I have another friend. His name is Dave. Um, and he's one of those friends that we can argue about anything and scream at each other. And at the end of the day, we're still best friends. Sometimes he tells me the things I need to hear but don't want to hear. Sometimes he tells me things that are fucking ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, ultimately, uh, he's always been there to help me, support me, and, uh, you know, with whatever it is that I'm dealing with at the time. And then, then my wife is uh, probably the biggest one. Yeah. I'd be dead in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> and I really mean that. Like she's really changed my life. She is, she is the most important thing to me out there. And it's important to have these people and to like prioritize these people and value these people. Like sometimes we get caught up in the hustle, and we forget about like the pillars in life, whether that be parents or siblings or family or friends from fitness and all these different things. Like I think it's important to. Be on the same page with those people. Yeah. You know, um, we were kind of talking earlier, but uh, my, I'm, I'm a little bit different, I think, than the, some of the people that you have here. Um, not good or bad, but just different. M you know, my priorities in life are, um, you know, we have certain goals, we as a family, and there are sacrifices that if we want to make those goals, they're going to have to be there. I love the idea of, you know, a work-life balance, but I think depending on your goals, um, sometimes that's not possible. Yeah. Um, and if everybody's not on the same page, that's when things go south. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, we are. At least I'd like to think we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like you, you heard earlier in my schedule, I schedule family time. And I have to. We have a shared calendar, and if there's things that are going on, we put it in there, and I don't miss them. I don't, but I schedule around them. If they're not in the calendar, then things get scheduled through there, and then I miss them. And yeah. I don't like that, but that's that's the reality of the situation. But even like even doing something like scheduling in the calendar, that's something that a lot of people don't even think of. Yeah. Like it doesn't even occur to people. It's just like, oh, I ran out of time. I haven't, haven't seen so-and-so in a while for our meal, or I haven't seen a friend kind of thing like depends on like the the dynamics of the person's life like where they're at like I think a lot of that you're right and I think a lot of that comes from mentors yeah or um, you know I have a business coach 
Um, and they really help me through these kinds of things, especially with the team now that we have is, is, uh, you know, I got to make sure that they're doing things too that are, you know, in line with me and the way I do things because they have to be successful because I'm putting effort into them. Right? Yeah, totally. Um, and you know, I can see that there are people like, I'll give you, you know, some examples. We have, we have people, um, every week we have a meeting at our office, okay? Not with just my team, but with a bunch of people. And there are new and, and like veterans in this sort of meeting. And some of the things that some people say in that, in that uh, meeting, it blows my mind that that's how they choose to operate their business because nobody's guiding them. No one's, like, like for example, somebody said, if I don't know the phone number, I don't answer the phone. And in my business, you don't know anybody. Yeah, you know, like if you don't answer the phone, how you, like how are you gonna get any business? You know, like this is I mean, it's not a one eight hundred number; it's a local phone number, and it's probably real estate related. You're not gonna answer the phone. So I don't remember where I was going with that now, but um, oh well, yeah, like like having somebody guide you through those kinds of things to to tell you that you, this is what you should do and this is how you should do things and. If you don't have that, you, you know, you're running around with your head cut off. Like, look behind me. I got this. I got my whole year planned. I got yeah. a calendar on the wall behind me with 12 months out that you can see. And I have planned everything for the year. It's actually, like, really clever. People say plan out your year, but until you actually see it laid out in a room. Yeah, because it's visual. Yeah. We do that on purpose, right? Like... Like, like everything in red is my... I know everyone can't see this. Maybe we should start filming. <laughs> um, everything in red is like vacations that I have booked. Um, and then in like pink is what Aaron has booked. And then blue is what Luke has booked. These are the people that work with me. And uh, we have something to look forward to now. We can look at this calendar and go, okay, look, only a few more weeks and I got this vacation. We're going to Vegas here. We're going to Palm Springs there, whatever it is. In the meantime, we can have our heads down and focus, okay? And then we have... Uh, um, an event planned every month. You were at one of the events the other day. Yeah, it was the awesome. Yoga thing that we did, right? But we planned it all for the year again, so that we're organized, so that I can schedule some time for myself and for my family. Um, and uh, yeah, the point is, is that if people don't, if they don't know better, they won't necessarily do it. Yeah, and that causes a lot of problems. Yeah. Well, even myself, like my, my podcast guests are scheduled up into March now. Yeah. And I like doing that because then I can structure. Usually I have an idea of when the dead times in my day are going to be as far as clients. Like it's very few to know people who train mid morning or late afternoon before like the five to eight rush kind of thing. Yeah. So if, if I can, I'll schedule it for those times and then. I just know it in advance and I have yeah, this. Like let's, let's think about that like as an example. Maybe we're getting off topic. Of we're good. About this podcast we're good. Up, but if you hadn't, if you, like today, yeah. you have me. Okay. I don't know. When's your next one? Next one is like next next Wednesday morning. Next Wednesday morning. Yeah. Okay, right? So imagine you haven't scheduled that yet today. Yeah. Today. This is done today. And you're telling me by next Wednesday, you're going to have to get somebody to agree, somebody that you want to talk to, to fit it into their schedule. Because the people you talk to probably have pretty busy schedules. We booked this sure like two months ago. Yeah. Right? So, but that's the problem. People don't do that. Yeah. Right? They just fly by the seat of their pants. They think, I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, be a podcaster or whatever. You know, I want to have this podcast to inspire people. Right? And then they do one. You know? Yeah. And they go, okay, when's the next one? And then... Okay, well, they think about that, and then by the time they get that together, it's been three months. Yeah. Right? And that was then, one thing yeah. I had seen, and I was like, nope, not going to do this. I'm committing. I'm it's all in. It's going to be consistent, man. Everything's consistency. Totally. Uh, we're going to segue to family. We're going to talk about each immediate family member and three good qualities of each. Uh, each, in like, immediate, like my wife and my son? Uh, like, parents, siblings kind of thing. <sighs> Um, my brother and I aren't that close. Uh, lately, we've been actually trying to contact more. We're quite different. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. 
that's late. It's, man. it's an interesting <laughs> dynamic between the two of us. Um, we, like you, you wouldn't believe we're brothers, but at the same time, I think that deep down we're probably quite similar in you know um, emotionally. Yep. Anyways, um, so some qualities. Let me tell you about my son, my baby boy. Sure. He's two years old. His name is Rockwell, and he is the nicest, most genuine, um, uh, like un disturbed like he, like he's not he hasn't been exposed to the evilness of this world yet and it's so refreshing to hang out with somebody like that yeah know? that has no shame they don't get embarrassed everything is interesting you know and it, it, I just love it like we're walking around like Home Depot yesterday he's like dad what's that dad what's that every second he's like <laughs> dad what's that and I never get tired of it yeah you know, like kids, it's just, they're just so innocent and pure. He is that, and I, I adore him. Yeah. Um, who else? Um, the qualities of my family. Okay, so my mom and dad are very different. My mom is very, um, how do I describe her? Let's describe my dad, and that'll, that'll in turn describe my mom. My dad is very cool, calm, and collected. Yeah. My mom is the opposite of that. Um, that being said, I think that I have a, a blend of the two of them, and I think that it, it you know, has some contribution to um, my uh, success, if you want to call it that, in life. Um, my mom is very um, specific, and uh, her expectations are pretty high. She's a bit more of a perfectionist. Things have to be a certain way. Um, and I have that, and I like that. Um, my wife doesn't like that, but I like that. <laughs> my clients like that, I, I think. Yeah, this podcast <laughs> likes that. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my dad is very um, kind of, you know, go with the flow, chill. He's very smart. Um, and, uh, you know, they've both always been very supportive in whatever it is I wanted to do. Yeah. In life, I could have been... I couldn't have been, but I could have been an astrophysicist, but I could never have been an astrophysicist. But for example, if I wanted to do that, they were like, sure, you can do it. Yeah. If I wanted to do, I don't know, work at 7-Eleven, they probably would have been like, come on, you can do something better than that. But essentially, like, if you care about it, they care about it. Hey? Yeah, they're just yeah. supportive with those kinds of things. And I had a tanning salon at a certain point in life, and they nice. were supportive with that. It wasn't the best business, but it was a business. What, what inspired you to have a tanning salon? There is a struggle. I can talk about that. Circle there back. we go. That was, just, that was a, a business that myself and Dave, who we talked about earlier, started together. Um, maybe in retrospect, it probably wasn't the best idea for us to start together because he was living in BC and I was living here, but we're going to do this tanning salon together. So um, we, uh, uh, we, I wrote this, we wrote this business plan and this is what we were going to do and this is how much money we were going to make. And um, we... We had no money, <laughs> and uh, we had a, a bit of a plan, and I went to my parents, and they gave us a little bit of money, and then we went to the bank, got a little bit of money, and, and Dave and his, his wife had a little bit of money, and we put it together, and we started this tanning salon. We bought a bunch of it for tanning beds, we put it right beside the gym. At the time, tanning was not such an evil thing. Like today, yeah, today, no, it was no, just a different tans. market, more yeah. favorable. Yeah, and um, you know, we didn't lose on it but at the end of the day you know I, I had certain goals in life as I still do and there was no way we were going to get there anytime soon at the, at the rate that that was growing so I sold it um, but you know in between starting that and, and selling it uh, it was really tough to pay the bills I worked 12 hours literally 12 hours 9 to 9 every day I was the only employee for 2 years straight so oh, seven, days, seven days a week yeah and uh it was probably more than two years, actually. And, uh, you know, there were months where we didn't bring in enough money to pay my own personal bills. Looking back on that, I should have not paid the corporate bills and paid the personal bills. But I didn't. I did it the other way around, which at the time ruined my credit. So it took a long time to uh, recover from that. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously things are fun now. But, you know, that was a big lesson and that was a big stress. And it cost me a relationship at the time as well. Um, and uh, ended up moving back home to my parents. Yeah. That's crazy. I forgot about that. 
I'm glad that we remembered it because I like to talk about that stuff, not to like put a person into a, like a sad place to remember these memories, but to just like, yeah, I want to build other people by showing them someone that they see as successful and showing them that it wasn't, it wasn't all like nice, happy on that path to be successful. Like everybody has learned some lessons, like everything comes at the cost of, of certain experiences kind of thing, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. 100%, man. I think that's what, that, that's, that's the definition of what everybody is, you know, like, like you are defined by your experience. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it, yeah, it is. And it kind of, it brings me to sort of like the backstory of how we cross paths. There's a few a few stories too, because part of it was True Ride. Like I was an instructor at True Ride, so we kind of bumped into each other there. And part of it was like Instagram. I've met a lot of my guests just through being on Instagram. And you just start following one person and just kind of grows from there. And uh, you rode my class one morning and I remember like you talking about how far of a drive it was kind of thing. Calm down. Yeah, I did. I'm pretty good for that. I don't, I don't, I don't say no to that. <laughs> and, well, the other thing was, uh, I think I think that particular ride that you came to, uh, I brought donuts, and you didn't actually eat a donut. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. But then when you got called out, I had your back for a spin class in Sherman Park, so it works works two ways. I don't have people call me up for spin class. Okay. I'm going to be a... Spinner, you are now a spinner? a spinner, a spin enthusiast. You're yeah. a spin junkie. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. there's that, and we uh, we were part of like a Fitbit competition for a bit there. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, it was fun. I like literally ran back and forth in, on a bridge in one of the parks just to win one of those, and then like the other week when I think I lost, I was just like too spent. I was like, I can't do anymore. I won't give up, man. <laughs> that, like. I'm I'm the most competitive person in the world, and rarely do I lose anything. Like that. <laughs> the only person who usually ever beats me at that kind of thing is Jesse. Yeah, he's just as competitive as me. Yeah, but like man, like on those some of those nights we were in that competition, I was on the treadmill at night watching TV. You know, I'll just stand here and walk until I win this sucker. I won't get off the <laughs> treadmill. I love it, and like that was. I'll probably start up another one of those just keep things fresh but like that was cool because it was a lot of very competitive people together because we had it's motivating I find that motivation in those kinds of things right yeah Um, we had like Vance and Jesse and you and Rob Clark and me and it's a good group good group yeah Yeah, now Rob will probably kill us all there's very good odds. Have you seen him lately? Now he's uh, he's a witch yeah, in an that. opera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In he's, the, he's got the big boobs. What uh, play is that? I saw it on this post the other day. Uh, it's not like Wizard of Oz or something. No, no. It's it's like a classic classic opera. I think they're doing shows in the next week or so. Yeah. Tickets are expensive. Are they? Yeah. Let me look this up, Rob. But for anybody that's. Uh, just tuning in and doesn't know the backstory of Rob Clark. Like he is the national anthem singer for the Edmonton Oilers. And in his time with the Oilers, he has lost, I think it's like over a hundred pounds. It's gotta be. Yeah. He doesn't, it's actually, I think heavier than he looks now. Like that show is Hansel and Gretel, by the way. But he, uh, yeah, like I remember he was over here in the summer and I was like how much do you weigh now and he was like heavier than me but he was thinner than me yeah you know like he looks good yeah no you know, he I'm is happy for him Jack. I remember him coming to like those spin classes you know when he was like just dying and now he never gave up yeah I think we all stopped except him he's still going that just shows you like you're talking about consistency yeah right Get the results you want. He's a very, very driven individual, very passionate, and as a trainer, it's really gonna gonna pay off for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's somebody that I chat with pretty often, and he's got his fortieth birthday coming up. Yeah, I know. Are you going to the party? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. When is it? It's at Central. I, I think it's again. like February thirteenth or something. It's coming up. I can't. I'll have to. I have to look. I can't remember. Okay. Okay. What's in my schedule, as you can see. Yeah. Very nice schedule, by the way. 
What's what's the whiteboard part? Is that like this that is um, this? We should people aren't going to get this, but we should you should you should film this. <laughs> <laughs> This is, um, there's four different like glass whiteboards on the wall and uh, three of them are for us. So one's for me and one's for Aaron and one's for Luke. They're on my team. And the other one is for listings and then some of our stuff that's upcoming this year. Um, so I can, I'll read you mine, for example. I have these guiding principles. These are like the principles that I live by, uh, both personally and professionally. Um, most of them, are professional related. Um, so that stuff is like the first sort of sticky note says progress, not perfection. Because as I said earlier, my mom's a bit of a perfectionist and I really am. And, but at the same time that causes me to stall on things when it's not perfect. Right. Um, and then it never gets done because I can't make it perfect. Right? Yeah. Um, Next one says go. That kind of relates into that. Uh, maintenance is boring. Growth is fun. That's that's when you know one of the things that I've been kind of thinking about growing this team instead of just being this one man show kind of thing. Um, it gets boring. It gets stagnant. It's more exciting when there's you know other people involved and maybe they don't know what to do. You get to you know teach them. It's exciting. Yeah, and they have different problems. So maybe they have problems they haven't dealt with and. I find it inspiring. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is inspire, not impress. Um, I think we all kind of get caught up in that, especially in this social media world, you know, where we all, I think, are probably guilty of putting out this smoke and mirrors, you know? Yeah. This yeah, facade yeah. of what everyone thinks we are. Yeah. You know, but, you know, really, it's not. It's just a snapshot. If, if anything, it's a snapshot of what we are. So inspire not impress is kind of like one of your things yeah be do have is my latest uh motto that i live by i learned it from terry cruz and uh it, it's really it's hard to understand but basically what it is is in order to have you must do in order to do you must be um and i really like that really resonates with me you know so something like like I, I wanna maybe I, I wanna be the own the number one own the number one hotel in the world one day. So what does the guy who owns the number one hotel in the world do, right? And in order to do what the guy who owns the number one hotel in the world does, I'm gonna have to be the guy who who is the number one owns the number one hotel in the world. Yeah, you got to work your way through that. Because too many people chase the goal, but they don't know the journey to get there. You know what I mean? So then they find some other way around it to get the goal. But in the end, it's not the goal that they want. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's uh, very paralleled with my uh, trainer journey. Essentially, I'll see people that are in a role or doing things a certain way that I think is great and demonstrates good good quality training and I'll talk to them and I'll ask them about their journey and I'll see if they have anything to teach me and learn as much as I can from these people who I think do a good job and that that sort of helps me and it all comes with work mm -hmm. like you you have to put in this work because they put in work like nothing's nothing's overnight success when like when somebody's successful in a very short period of time there's something missing like they're they're not as fulfilled as they they could be kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah that's exactly what it's about yeah yeah so i really look at it that way you know be you know you have to be you have to be this person or you're never going to get to where you want to be yeah you know people think once they get there then they'll be that person that doesn't work yeah i don't know maybe it's just me it no, sounds like I one of those agree. stupid things that's like what is, was, and what was, will be. And you're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, what to me, it makes say? sense. No, I don't it makes sense. sense to anybody else. Yeah. Um, in charge, not in control. That's the next one. That's really tough for me because I, I, I need to be in control. But there's a lot of things in my business, especially, that I, I have no control over. And then I get crippling anxiety because of it because I'm up all night. And then I'm up early because I'm not sleeping. And I'm thinking about it. And in reality, I can't control it. So um, that's one of my things. 
innovate, don't compete. That's a big one for us as realtors because, uh, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of realtors are the same. It's the same thing. Yeah. Just a different face on it. On it you know, um, we're trying to do things that are different. Hence this yoga event we did the other day, right? Yeah. We're doing a first time home buyer seminar coming up and then we do things like it in October, we drop off pumpkins at everybody's doorstep. You know, all these different things that we're trying to be different to stand out yeah. instead of buying a bunch of bus benches. Well, and I also have to uh, give you a shout out. I had my goal crushing event and you're one of the sponsors. Yeah. You uh, sponsored the event with a digital copy of... Uh, what book was it? Was uh, it Rich self? Dad, Poor Dad. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, yeah, yeah. 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 So every attendee was able to contact you for a digital copy. Mm -hmm. And like, that's huge. Yeah. Like, it, it's amazing when somebody that puts on an event for the very first time gets that kind of support. And that's that's the kind of thing that shows you that a business like truly authentically cares because like they're 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 taking a risk on somebody that hasn't that hasn't shown their their event before like sometimes it takes like a few times mm -hmm. but the attendees had a good time they they walked yeah. away with a lot of value and i'm glad that we were a part of that you know and we'll always be a part of it and whatever you need you know i'm all about helping people yeah um, it's weird how that makes you feel good, you know? And I, I don't like to, I don't talk about it much and I, you know, I certainly don't like to brag about it, but helping people feels good, you know? It does. Um, and oddly, it's a very selfish thing. Do you know what I mean? Like it makes me feel good to help people. So I'm helping people so that I feel good about it. Yeah. Isn't that, it seems backwards. But, but it's, it works. it's true. Like I can't remember where I've heard it, but that's like... People are always going to serve themselves in yeah. the end. It's, it's really hard to do anything. People yeah, yeah. Are serving themselves. Yeah. yeah. It's like tell me about something that you do for somebody without using the word I or me. You can't do it. It's tough. Yeah. Because it's about you. It is about yeah. you. Yeah. You know? Like then, tell me why, right? Why do you go why do you do Santa's Anonymous? We do Santa's Anonymous for a thing. Well I can't tell you why I do it without using yeah. the word me or I. It's impossible, you know. Unless you're like, they're, they're good. Because I guess you could say there. something like yeah. that because the kids need it, you know? Yeah. I just ruined my argument, I think. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> people people got some value from that that statement because they're going to like think about things that they say and they're going to be like, you know, he has a point. Yeah. So anyways, moving, I mean, like I could go through this board here. I mean, I, I, I'm, I damn near interview myself. Feel free to cut this stuff out, whatever you want. But the next part is offerings. So like the, this is what us as a team are offering people. So we have different approaches to marketing and we have that kind of broken down. Um, and then, you know, how we do things. The next part is future focus. So I've got a 25 year plan up there. A lot of people will do a one or two year plan, but I've got a big plan. Um, so I have certain growth rates that I want on there. So many days off a year I want there. So much profit I want on there. Um, that kind of that kind of thing. And then I have 2019 broken down into quarters, although we just put this, like we just filled this out last week, right? So our first quarter is, you know, is written down, but the rest are not yet. They will be next week. And then down here, like you can see here, we have we want 50 ends lined up on our first quarter for the year, 50 doors. And then in this below one, we have everything that's coming soon. So I can look at this and I can evaluate where we are as a business. And I, I got 26 ends right there. So I'm halfway there for the year. And if I didn't have that, I would no idea what the fuck is going on in my business. And most people have no idea, you know? Yeah. No, I can almost good. take it to the bank, right? So anything above that is just bonus for me. Totally. And it's little concepts like this and practices like this are valuable to anybody listening. Cause like, I could totally apply this to personal training, especially for someone like myself running, running my own sort of my business. Mm -hmm. I need to be accountable to myself and I need to be organized and I need totally. to have like a plan, but a plan, not just tomorrow, but a ways away. And yeah. it doesn't matter what things I prioritize as long as I'm like growth oriented. Like I'm always looking ahead kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You have to have a goal. Yeah. You know, like, like, I mean, I suppose you don't, but I, I feel like if I didn't have a goal, next thing I know, I'd be 60 years old. And like, what, where, where am I? I could be in the same spot, you know? So I, for me personally, having this visual up here is great. And, you know, like have a vision board over there too. That's awesome. Um, 
this is kind of turning into a a, a business uh, podcast. It's but. it's like <laughs> the kind of business that I think is good. It's not not a bunch. Why do you think it's a bad business? Yeah, no, it's like the, the, the kind of like business talk I should say, because you're speaking uh-huh. from experience. You're you're here doing it. You you've been doing it for years. Like this is valuable. Mm-hmm. People people are gonna take something away from this. Yeah. There's something that I hate, and it's when people blow smoke up people's butts. Like it's no good. Yeah, man. If, if you don't have life experience to speak to, yeah, and you're you're saying things that aren't necessarily true, but all of this stuff is true. It's proven. I think that. For me, anyone who says anything with certainty, yeah, I don't believe what you're telling me. You know what I mean? Because nothing is certain for sure. You know, like I mean, obviously the sky is blue and one plus one is two. That's not what I mean, though. You know, like so I really think about everything like that. But I'm a skeptic, and like this is not, um, you know, necessarily a healthy <laughs> mentally. For everybody, that's for sure. It, you know, it affects me and I'm sure it affects other people. It's yeah. like, it's a skill set that has helped you succeed in the industry you're in. That's that's something that I would say yeah. you could probably agree with. Yeah. yeah. Keeps you safe. Yeah. Well, I have to though, right? Because it's it's part of it. I yeah. can't I can't give people contracts that I haven't read over to see where someone's trying to screw you because they are, you know, yeah. and it will happen and... You know, I had this conversation with a friend of mine the other day because we we're doing this deal, and I was like, "You gotta be careful because at some point this will happen." I'm, I'm sure. Like, as sure as this, the sun sets or rises, it may not happen, but it's gonna happen. Yeah. That's what I tell people. I guess I'm talking with certainty, but you know what I mean. Like, I'm, I remember I asked my lawyer one time. He goes, "Is that gonna happen?" No. Could it? Yes. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but it sounds like I need to be careful. Well, I mean, I can even tell you off the podcast sort of an experience that I've had where, like, there's a real estate developer who should be in jail. Oh, man. So, so like, skeptics, events. I'm a big fan of yeah. skepticism Yeah, because that makes a client feel safe. Yeah, you got to pay attention to that stuff because somebody's trying to screw you mm-hmm. at some point. It's happening. For sure. Yeah, like, if, if they you are show of money to people, yeah, all of a sudden, even your friends. I've been dealing with this, this one deal for... God, like a month now with this other guy who's, whose client is his buddy. And I, it's clear to me that we're being, that, that we were lied to. And so was this other realtor was lied to, but, but he can't accept that, Yeah, that people will do that. His friend will do that. I don't think he did that. And I was like, well, it doesn't make any sense any other way. This is what happened. Anyways, we're getting off topic. All good. When you're looking for somebody that shows integrity, good ethics, good morals, what are your telltale signs? Like you got to be pretty good at reading people by now. How okay. do you how do you assess that? Say that again and say it slower. Okay. <laughs> I do talk pretty fast. Like, no, you don't. I just wasn't prepared for the. Question. I'll get. I'll get. We kind of segue and I got inspired. Let's okay, Let's hear. It. When you're scanning a person up and down, and you're thinking like. Is this person, do they have good integrity? Do they have good ethics? Do they have good morals? And you're making that like gut instinct assessment. What are, what are the things that you look for? What are the things that tell you? Um, I think that things stand out. I mean, every conversation is different, right? But I mean, for me, it's, you know, obviously always work related, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. I seem to have this innate ability to find holes in what people are telling me. I don't remember things that you said to me, you know, that doesn't add up to what you, you said. Now, that doesn't mean that they have no integrity or bad ethics or something like that. Sometimes people are just trying to be impressive or they're nervous or whatever the scenario is. But I, I make a note of it in my mind. And then as time goes on, if there are other things that come up, you know, that's when I start building this sort of profile. Yeah. Um, also, you learn after years of dealing with people, you, you know, what the tactic really is. You know, I'm dealing with it right now. This one guy wants a hundred grand more than his house is probably worth, right? But I know he knows that I'm right. <laughs> you know, he's just, he's just, he, he doesn't trust me yet. He doesn't know me. And uh, it's going to be some time, you know, of building that relationship before we probably both get what it is that we need to move forward with this deal. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm confident that it will happen. Again, it doesn't mean that he's got no ethics or 
joke or you know, that he's lying to me or anything like that. But it's just a flag to your skepticism radar. Yeah, I just pay attention to it. You know, makes sense. It's hard to. I mean, it's a really hard skill to teach. I'm yeah. dealing with that problem with my my team right now. Not that it's a problem, but it, but it, you know. You need it's that like a learning experience, curve. you know, and then I have to explain to them why I feel this way about something that somebody said 45 minutes ago in a conversation that they didn't even notice. And then they, they you know, sometimes they go, yeah, that makes sense. Or sometimes they go, yeah, you're just, you know, worrying about nothing. You know, you're too cynical. Yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, man, like I get, I get out of those situations when they happen because I'm paying attention to them. Have you ever noticed anything with like eye contact or body language that's been a red flag for you? Not a, not a red flag. Or just but, an indicator. But I know how body language works. We've taken courses on that, you know, and if you can get someone to mirror your body language, they're really into what you're saying. And if you can't, um, you know, something's up, you know, they don't trust you yet or they don't believe you or, you know, whatever the scenario is, but. I mean, I could. I wish I could video some of my meetings. I could show you what I mean. You know, I, we were talking about this at this boot camp here at the other day. Where I know if I lean forward at the table and they lean forward at the table, I, I know we're on the same page. You know, yeah, they're into what I'm saying. If they're not, I got I got to change something. You yeah, know, what am I missing in this? What kind of person are they? What are they looking for? You know, it's all about personalities and stuff. And you, you know, you take courses and you get to learn about this stuff. But I think part of it is just intuitive. You just slowly learn. Yeah. And it's usually after you get burnt. Yeah. You know? No, it makes it makes total sense. It's life experiences, like different different things that kind of teach you. Like, I remember what happened when, when this happened and what I noticed, what I felt. And like, I was talking to my friend, Dean Guido. We were talking about like gut instinct and how we've really learned to trust our gut. Oh, you have to trust your gut. Your gut, that's, that's, that's like the most trustworthy thing you've got, man. Yeah. It's not lying to you. Your yeah. head's lying to you. Your heart's lying to you. Your gut, it knows. The gut you knows. feel this way. You, I don't know. I just don't like him. I don't know why. Well, there's probably a reason. Yeah. You feel this way because somebody else acted this way. Something like that or just like, yeah, just the vibe that you get. And body language. Like I, I think back to past experiences and thinking about body language. And I'm like, yep, yeah, no, he's right. He has a point. Like if it's, if it's not mirrored, whether it's like their proposal or my proposal kind of thing, yeah, it matches up. But it's good to like find people that kind of your your vibe attracts your tribe. Mm -hmm. You want people that are into the things that you're into, because yeah. if they're not, then it's gonna backfire at some point, kind of thing. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. Like it's not a. I don't know. I mean, it's not an exact science, but it works for me. Totally it works for you. Yeah, you know, it works obviously for the people around us. Yeah. And I have to give you another, because I'm going to pump your tires a few times in this podcast. You, you've sponsored it. <laughs> um, there was an experience that has kind of stuck with me. Actually, a few experiences. And usually I'm like running around doing errands. And um, it's, it's been when I really needed something to say the right thing. One instance was I had, uh, I was just about to put in my notice with my old job. And I was like, I need to get like a fitness job and it, it's tough when when you're fresh in the industry if like freshly certified a lot of places just won't hire you because they don't know what you can do or like there's there's lots to uh to learn um and so you you shared some of the posts from like like job postings like Orange Theory I think was hiring so you showed that to me and you kind of you talked to me about the hustle and just to you and Vance both talked to me about, about the hustle and just like how you kind of have to stick it out and just keep, keep working at it and then it'll work out. And to have people that you don't know well uh, kind of stand out and like be that person for you is imperative. When, when you're kind of sticking your neck out, like for me, it was a, a huge risk, a huge jump when I jumped careers mm -hmm. and tons of moments of doubt. And those little, like, short little chats on Instagram chat were super helpful. Good. So, got to give you credit for that. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, I think that it's important without, um, you know, 
being too egotistical about it. You know, some people don't want your advice, so I don't. I don't just throw it out there. You know, like we must have, for some reason, talked about something. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like I guess like I I'm all about helping people, man. It makes me feel good. It makes them feel good, and uh, yeah, I'm glad. To, I'm glad to make you feel better. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, like we, it would typically be, you would get on the topic of fitness or maybe I had just left Costco and I was seeing if you were uh, eating Costco. I think there's something, yeah, there's something about your job. Like, I remember kind of what you're talking about because Lawrence Siri was hired and I think I sent you something about that. Yeah, because you knew I was looking for fitness yeah. and you had been supporting an initiative that uh, Orange Theory was putting on. So we had been talking about that a few yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think and it was so, a charity thing. It was a dollary thing, I think. Yeah. Hey man, I'm in the people business. Totally. And uh, it's all about relationships. And uh, I build them wherever I can, you know. Uh, but I build real relationships. Yeah. Not, you know, I'm not just you're sitting in my house right now. Totally, you know, yeah. It's like, not just a, uh, you know, I'm going to do this maybe one day he'll call me some house. <laughs> No, it's it's very genuine and authentic, and that's that's why you're here. That's why you're on the podcast, and it's awesome. So, what are your five favorite things about your wife? Oh God, where do I start? We used to play this game where she should be like, "Tell me five things you love about me." But now I get put on the spot. I probably said five hundred things that I love about her, and I, you know, I get put on the spot. I got to narrow it down. Um, I get it's pretty bad anxiety, and I don't see anyone for that at all. And my wife understands clinical anxiety, and she really helps me through that a lot of the time. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll be thinking about something or some deal or something that's happening or whatever it is, and sometimes I spiral. And she's really good at that, you know, bringing me back, helping me, you know, not worry. Those kind of things that we talked about earlier. Um, and I need that. She's a very, very good at that. So I love that about her. She's patient with that kind of thing. She makes me laugh all the time. I won't admit to her face that she's funny. But she is quite funny. We do this thing on, uh, on Snapchat and Instagram where I just randomly pick one of those face swaps or whatever and she makes up a character. And everybody loves it. I get, I get oh, more yeah. messages about that than I get about anything I ever. watch those. They are hilarious. Yeah, she's really funny. She, <laughs> she actually, like, she, she, she got accepted to some university uh, for, for drama or something like that. At one point, she ended up not going, going into other multiple courses. Um, but, yeah, she really makes me, she makes me laugh. She's very supportive with everything and understanding of how this business works. Um, and uh, understands that I'm not always going to be home for dinner or that I might not be up for breakfast. I yeah. might be gone already or or I might need to sleep in. You know, she understands the, the stresses of this. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's just so supportive with that kind of thing. She's a, she's a ladder climber. I love that about her, too. She's very self-motivated. Um, she's far more self-motivated than me. Um, and... Uh, She's recently got a, a new job where she's running the office of her, her, uh, I don't know what you call it, her department, I suppose. She's a nurse. Um, but she's, you know, slowly climbing her way up that. And I love that. I find that quite inspiring with her. And I think it, it melds well. We meld well together because of those kinds of things. She's such a good mom. Um, and she's... You know, emotional talking about her. She just, she's she's pretty perfect, and I love her very much. That's awesome. That's the kind of stuff that I like to have on this podcast, because not a lot of people actually take the time to appreciate these really important things in their life, yeah. and so to hear somebody speak so like lovingly about an important person in their life inspires other people to look at their own and yeah. think. Like, I think it's really important to be you know, cognizant of your relationships. Yeah. You know, and we're aware too that relationships take work. You know, like not a lot of people think like that. You know, they think like, I shouldn't say not a lot, but 
Sometimes people it's, need it reminders. Seems, yeah, it seems that way. Where you know, relationships take work, and you know, sometimes it takes therapy. We go to therapy. You know, um, you, you need that, um, and uh, you know, it's important to remember the good things too, right? You know, whether I get annoyed because the drips of water on the counter because I'm OCD like that, you know, instead yeah. of going, well, yeah, she also did get your son up this morning and dress him and make breakfast and then went to work. Yeah. All before, you know, I really did much. <laughs> so maybe I don't need to worry about those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, but you need to be reminded sometimes because you get caught up. Totally. In the, in the little unimportant things. Remember the importance. She's also taught me to travel, which I, I never really thought about much, you know, as I was growing up and stuff. You know, like you go to Mexico. That's what you do. You're from Canada, you go to Mexico. That's vacation. Yeah. Um, and she's taught me so many different places and things and goals and what we want to do and she's taught me how to appreciate different cultures and different religions and she's taught me a lot about um, you know political views racism all these things that you know this this you know, privileged white boy from show we, we can get tunnel vision and for sure yeah and it, like the things that I would say or the way I would act I didn't realize the you know, effect that that has or how, how, you know, what that meant even. Yeah. Yeah. So she's, she's really changed me. I said earlier, I'd be dead in a ditch somewhere. I really do mean that without her. Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, like even just changing industries, like for, for myself working in a warehouse versus working in training, there's things that you're, you're exposed to that you don't think twice about it, like different different uh, cultures, different, all these different things. And we will say something and we won't think twice about it because we're just so used to that like environment. Mm -hmm. Then you get into a different perspective and you look back on certain things and some things you had right and some things you had wrong. And so perspective, whether it be from a significant other or a friend or a family is so important. You know, and I find that um, those kinds of things with like, I try to always be learning and always be growing. A lot of, a lot of people, especially, I feel like at my age, have stopped learning and stopped growing. They are who they are, and I've found lately that that's created some separation between me and some some really close friends. You know, but we just don't see things the same anymore that we used to. Yeah. You know, we don't have the things that are in common anymore because I've I've learned about this kind of thing, and I, I don't think it's appropriate to maybe say certain things or act a certain way. Yeah. And it's hard to have that conversation with your friends, you know, because to hear from you is different than to hear from maybe somebody that they would respect their opinion from, you know, to, to my friends a lot of time, I'm just their buddy from childhood, you know? Yeah. It's relatable. Times change. Perspective changes. It kind of changes how we are. Yeah. Different alignment. Um, tell us a little bit about your fitness. Like, you have a fully set up gym. There's got to be a little backstory to it. Like, have you always been fit? What did uh, you no, I haven't, well, I haven't always been. I've always been pretty athletic. Yeah. You know, I'd, I don't want to call myself an athlete, but I've always been pretty good at everything I've done sports wise. And, and if I'm not, I, I am determined to be. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that that mental state kind of has always kept me in shape a bit um the full gym downstairs truthfully is my wife she's in better shape than i and nice. she eats better than i do like she and always has yeah um and she, it was a christmas present i got for her this year because she wanted a gym in the basement i wanted a movie theater in that room um but i started to think about you know okay well i'm, I'm really busy and i don't have a lot of time to go physically to the gym and I don't find it like I, I don't want to get up at 5 30 in the morning and then go drive somewhere and it's minus 30 out and I get got snow in the driveway you know I don't do all that yeah um you do hear all the stories about some of the you buy gym put it in your house you don't use it you know like pool table yeah I have a pool table too and I don't <laughs> use it um but this I thought okay what's the what's the issue behind people not using their gym and what I kind of came to the conclusion, conclusion was you can't do everything. It's not a full gym. You can't get the same workout that you would get at the gym. So I had a set amount of space to work with. 
And I was determined to find some things that I can put in this thing so I can do everything. Um, on top of giving it to her as a Christmas present, and it's a present for me too, right? I didn't want to buy something that only she would use, yeah. right? I want to be able to use it too, but if I'm going to use it, it's got, to, it's got to have all these things that I need, right? So it took me a long time actually to find a specific machine that would fit in a specific spot. It's not one machine, but there's a bunch of things down there. But I had to have, you know, we'd have a proper bench press, incline, decline, flat. I had to have cables. I had to have, you know, bent over rows. You know, I had to have everything. Everything yeah. I could as far as weights go. We yeah. had a treadmill. And then, I, you know, you buy the other things like a Bosu ball and whatever else. Um, and then dumbbells, another, it was a really important thing. Like we used to have those those bull flex ones that you adjust. But yeah, so anyways, I bought this for her, but at the same time for me uh, to use in the basement so that we would actually stay in shape. My bigger thing, it's never been really that hard for me to like, to stay in, in, in shape as far as like cardiovascularly or even, you know, physically in general, but my diet is not the best. And it's, it's really up and down. And I want to be more consistent with that. So this kind of play together. We do the gym, let's start just making healthy choices. Yeah. And some of it is just like changing the habits that you don't even think about. Because I'd imagine there's a certain amount of like maybe functions where you're networking with a client or potential clients or like mortgage brokers and stuff and there's food involved. Yeah. And you you could potentially play a role in what food is involved, you know? Like oh, totally. sometimes we don't we don't think about what we have control of. And it's cool because we can, we can like take a leadership role and be like, actually, let's uh, partner with this, this healthy food business kind of thing. hundred percent, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's neat. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's such a thing now, you know, like I think everybody is looking at their lifestyle and what yeah. they eat and eating better is cool and not drinking is cool. I stopped drinking too a long time ago. I haven't had drinking months and months and months. Um, and that's really changed things too, right? And it was hard at first because you still have your buddies who drink. And they want to go to hockey and they invite you to a hockey game and then you're not drinking. Like, what's wrong with you? Why aren't yeah. you drinking? You know, that yeah. kind of thing. So it took a while to get over that. But now those same guys, they're not drinking anymore. Yeah. You know? Which is great for me. Slowly but surely, I think that, that people kind of are realizing, you know, these choices in life are not good. We should probably make better choices. And, well, non-alcoholic beer has been on the rise. Like the variety has doubled, tripled, quadrupled. Mm -hmm. There's some really good. Yeah, it tastes good. I yeah. had some here. Nice, nice. I had non-alcoholic wine, but it's not the same. It's not <laughs> grape juice is yeah, not the same. Totally. Yeah. Well, the I, beer I, like drink. I've actually found it to be kind of a a good handy recovery drink. What? Non-alcoholic non beer. Oh, interesting. Because it's kind of is like an electrolyte. I, I'm not sure the science base behind it, so I won't talk about it too much, but they were an official sponsor to the German Olympic team. Mm. Seems appropriate. But in that uh, in that year, I think they were like the third highest mental medal, medal count in the Winter Olympics. Oh, really? Which kind of goes to has show... Has to do with the beer. Has to. It has to. You said I should start drinking again if I want to be in the Olympics. Non-alcoholic. <laughs> it was, it was non-alcoholic beer that they used. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy it. Although I seem to get a hangover from it. It gives me a crazy headache the next day. I don't know why. You probably need more water. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? I'm sure it's something. But Who knows? It seems what I have. That maybe dehydrates me still. I yeah. Know. Anyways, I, I don't mind that. Especially like the Budweiser. I actually quite enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I just think it's neat because it, it enables people to make healthier choices. And not only that, it's it's like if you want, like sometimes it's hard to tell your friends you're going to drink it. Yeah. So you got to secretly like, you, you can secretly order this kind of thing, you know. I'll never forget, I was out with Jesse and Vance and Neil and Jordy and they all wanted to go for drinks and I wasn't drinking. Yeah. And we went to Joey's. Yeah. So I got to Joey, or no, it was the local. And I got there early for everybody and I told the server look I'm not drinking none of these guys know I'm not drinking I don't want them to know so I want to order I was like a it was like a some sort of mocktail like I don't know it was a mojito like a virgin mojito or something and I uh, I was like so I'll just say I'll have another one of these and that's it right so I'm there nobody's around and then Everybody shows up. We're all sit at the same table. Yeah. My drink comes. Everybody's sitting there. The server goes, Virgin Mojito? And I was like, thanks. Oh. And I was like, you're not drinking? And that's, 
That's where it began, you know? I I went out on an occasion, it was somebody's birthday, and it was with a group of friends, and I just did not feel like having any alcohol that night. And they were getting like this this slush drink, and it was really good. Um, but it had like four shots in it or something. And I talked to the waitress, and I was like, just give me like a, like a Pepsi slush kind of thing. And she was able to do that, mm-hmm. and it looked the same. Mm-hmm. And so they were like having like six of their things, so they they were done. Mm-hmm. But I was good to go, yeah, yeah. and I was able to be de- designated driver. And when they were like, "Wait, no, this is not right," then I showed them the receipt, yeah, yeah. and like all of my things that I ordered said Pepsi. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, wow, like we wouldn't have even known. Mm-hmm. And it's just you can still have a good time, and I like to sort of advocate that because it. It gives people that are a little self-conscious about it that second opinion that, hey, like, yeah. you can make all kinds of different choices with your life. And I, I have no judgment on either side of the fence, yeah. but I like to be kind of an enabler that, that gives that option out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, like, places like Central, you can get a good selection of non-alcoholic Mocktails. beer. Yeah, like, that conversation with Jesse about that, yeah. So many They're options. Good, great mocktails, yeah. Yes. Lots, Lots of sugar, though. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. you win it's some moves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to go into the last question. This is something that I ask every guest. Mm. If you could give one piece of advice on how to authentically live your life to the fullest, what would that piece of advice be? Um, to the fullest. Yeah. Like, you want to be living your best life. You want to be as happy as you can be. I don't know that I can give you a... Uh, uh, one a specific answer. Nobody ever just gives one. It's you know what I mean? It's like, it depends what your goals are. Yeah. You know, so I think that you have to understand that depending on where your goal is in life or what your goals are in life, there may or may not be the sacrifices you have to make. You know, this, the, the, this you know, uh, self-love movement thing is really good and it's really big right now but it's not always realistic I don't, I should, self-love is probably the wrong word but you know there are definite things in life it, it's tough to have your cake and eat it too so be aware of that you know you might see some people they, they, it looks like this on social media that they've got all the success and they go on vacation all the time people think that about me because I post these photos I don't post much except for work stuff and when I'm on vacation so it seems like I'm on vacation all the time um, but, but there, there are sacrifices, sacrifices that are made, you know, by a lot of these people behind the scenes that we're not aware of. So don't, you know, don't think that, you know, if you if you find yourself doing these things and, and you now realize there are sacrifices that you have to make, don't think that that's a failure. That's part of the game. Yeah, I completely agree. There's uh, there's a lot of guests that have been on that see it the same way, like. The, like, having everything in life is not what we think it is. There is always, like, life is life. Yeah. There's struggle. Yeah. 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 I mean, it'd be great, like, if we could all grow up like my son is right now. Just stay the same way. And just be happy and thankful for what, for what you got. But it doesn't end up that way. Your life's tough and, you know, it, it really depends where you want to be in life. You can be content and happy doing certain things. And I've actually probably even lowered the bar on myself. Um, but it's still there, and um, yeah, you have to be aware of that thing. And I would also say that make sure that your your spouse or whoever it is, the the people that are intimately involved in your life are aware of that too, right? Yep. It's awesome. Yeah, it's good chat. Thanks for joining me today. You want to talk about anything else? <laughs> <laughs> What's time